Good afternoon guys, um, I hope everything's going well for y'all. I haven't done a video in a while, so I suppose I will um, show you one. So, this is a Toro Time Cutter SS4235. Uh, a customer brought it in, they wanted a full tune-up, you know, spark plug, air filter, oil change, etc. Um, and then they said it also, it was just, the battery was dead. Um, I went ahead and took care of that. That's not what the video is about. I threw an uh, AutoZone Duralast battery in there. That's generally what I use for batteries now. Um, I took the old one there and they gave me $10 back, which is nice. Um, Y'all might be noticing this cable right here is stretched. That's Toro's design. That's nothing I can do. I assume that Toro had a certain battery. that, uh, Like they had a... Uh, I guess they had a special battery that you used for this, but this one, it works. There's We're getting 12 volts at the solenoid, which leads me into my next subject. So now, um, when you turn the key before, it didn't do anything because the battery only had 2 volts in it. Now the battery is well charged, and we have a click at the solenoid, um, but no crank at all. So... Um, a lot of people think because the solenoid clicks that it's good. That's absolutely false. Your solenoid could be bad. Um, but there's some electrical things that you can check. I'm not going to show you all how to do the whole jump start thing. If you want to do that, you can either use a wrench to do it, which I don't really like because that creates sparks and that's a hazard. But what you can do is you can disconnect the negative battery cable, uh, you can disconnect the red wire from the solenoid and disconnect this wire, plug this back in, and then you can just touch those two together. That's a better way to do it than the wrench method, but I, for me personally, I don't need to jump it because I have a power probe, and that's what we're going to be using today to test this solenoid. And I already know what the problem is with this thing. Um, I just want to show you guys how to do it. So let's get the power probe out and get started. All right, I'm going to hook up my power probe right now to the battery. Sorry if I'm in the way. Whoop. There we go. This is a power probe 3. This is what I'm going to be using for the test today. Um, allows you to supply voltage and ground. Uh, these are the fairly standard power probes that people use nowadays. I know they actually have a 4 now. Um, but I like the power probe 3. I think it's a very good... Um, tool. Let's see. Y'all yeah, can see the solenoid. So, I, I've got y'all zoomed in on the solenoid. So, let me show y'all how we're going to test this. So, first, you want to make sure that you have battery voltage. Actually, you just touch the positive terminal on the battery. And we've got 12.7 volts. That's plenty to do our testing. So, basically, on the solenoid, what you're going to see is you're going to see your battery positive wire this comes directly from the battery this is going to be going this is going to be going to the starter that goes that's the positive wire directly to the starter these two wires back here are your control wires um, so that's what's going to be activating the solenoid right there so what you're going to want to check for first is battery voltage going to the solenoid you're going to be checking that on the battery wire from the battery to the solenoid. So, on that post right here, you're going to stick it under the red jacket right there and touch the post. As you can see, I have system voltage there. Now, we're going to check ground on the starter. If you don't get a ground on that post right there, then that means that there is an issue with the ground somewhere or something in the starter is broken, so you'll just need to check some grounds. Now this ground on this circuit, actually this body ground is actually controlled by a computer, which is the brake actuator. The time cutters have a electronic parking brake, and so basically that's a computer. They call it an actuator, but from what I got from it, from the wiring diagram, it's, a, it's an actuator. So, now how to actually test the solenoid, you're going to hold it on let me turn this off for a minute. You're going to hold your power probe on the terminal of the solenoid that supplies power to the starter. So that's going to be 
the, the uh, if you follow the wire from the solenoid to the starter, that's going to be the terminal on the solenoid that you're going to want to stay on right there. So now, when you turn the key, if it works, you should have power. As you can see, there's no power when we turn that, so basically we could assume right now that the solenoid's bad, just because it's clicking. If it wasn't clicking, what you'd want to check, you want to disconnect these two wires right here. This wire right here is going to be a power when you turn the key. And this is different on d different mowers, so you definitely want to check that. So I'm going to hold it right here. There we go, we got power at that wire. Now we're going to check the computer supplied ground for this. Um, so you see when you turn the key on there, we have a ground. That's what you're wanting, that's what you're supposed to have. So to sum things up, since our solenoid, as you can see, I still have the wires there disconnected. There we go. So in summary, basically we can just tell our solenoid is bad because how this solenoid works, it's basically a high current relay. When power is supplied here and ground is supplied here, what happens is, is this activates a coil in there. That coil pulls the, the contacts of the solenoid shut and allows battery power to go from here through the switch to the starter, which is right back here. So basically what we can tell when this power is not getting to this terminal right here, there's something broken inside there. Uh, there's no sense in rebuilding the solenoid. They're cheap enough. Just go online and get one. I already ordered one on Amazon. So uh, hopefully that comes and that's all right. So I've got a question for y'all. It's actually regards the battery. Um, write down in the comments below, what battery do you use and what do you think about Duralast batteries? Um, so far, I like it. Um, seems like a good quality battery. I usually use AutoZone for most of my stuff uh, that I can't order on Amazon because they've just got great deals usually. Um, they've got their the store I go to. They're always very friendly there, so I've just stuck with them. But let me know what you think about the Duralast batteries for me. Until next time, thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.